I mean, my whole life, I've always been like a warrior in a way. Like, at least my family has always seen like that's how I am. But I wouldn't say it like was got to the point where it was like affecting me mentally until I started having like intimate relationships, like closer friends. I went to an art school where I excelled because I naturally, God had given me these gifts, I just picked up music. And then middle school, I went to the art school, similar thing, and then that end, you add in athletics. So I was one of the better athletes and I was in the music, so I was doing all these things. They called me the robot boy in middle school because I did everything well. And like at the time, like I didn't think anything of it, but now, you know, late high school and now I'm realizing like, I wasn't healthy. Like from a young age, I have to maintain that image that I built up my literally in my entire life. Not only did I feel from the outside world, but then I started setting myself up. Like I felt like I had to be that person and I wasn't, I'm not. End of sophomore year into like junior year when baseball and college recruiting start, like that stuff starts to pick up. And so like that's added stress, kind of anxious all the time. And for a while I thought it was just like my nature, like I'm just, I've always been a natural like overthinker. I like think and think and think until I know for sure like this is what I want to do. I started experiencing the physical consequences, I guess. And around January of 2020, I would eat. Well, for one, I was eating very slow. I thought my like throat was swollen and I just physically couldn't swallow. Two, three weeks after I started noticing like not being able to chew and eat at a normal pace, I started like basically throwing up within 30, 40 minutes of eating. The one I remember specifically, I was at the gym with my dad and I was just drinking my protein shake like normal. We were walking out and we saw some friends. I was like, like, oh crap. So I sprinted back to the bathroom and it all came up. And I was just like, this is really weird. And I just assumed it was, I was like drinking my protein shake too fast or something like that. But then it started happening more and more like every night after I ate, I'd go into the bathroom and then I'd have to, and I'd throw up. And it was almost like I was unintentionally like bulimic, where I wasn't forcing myself to throw up, I just physically couldn't hold it down. I lost almost 20 pounds just from throwing up so much. And it, it was scary because I didn't know why, I just thought it was my diet. Like I went, I got a whole list of foods I should and shouldn't be eating. Like I changed things. It helped a little bit and I thought, okay, maybe it's just my diet. And it probably did go away for like a week or two, but then peak quarantine area, um, when like gyms were shut down, I started freaking out. Cause like, I can't go to the gym. I'm not gonna put on muscle to play baseball and all this. So I was like doing my stuff at home everything seemed normal, and then I started throwing up again. I was still taking the acid reflux medicine. I was still doing all of the medical things the doctor told me I should do. I was like, this isn't normal. So I went back in. He was like, this is like to the point where like, this is anxiety. Like this is basically is GERD. So I don't know what it all stands for. And he said, you gotta get this under control. Or you're just, it's not gonna stop. I didn't realize that anxiety could take that much of a toll physically especially for someone like me because I felt like I didn't really have any trauma or significant, you know, experiences that a lot of people say causes their anxiety. For me, it was just kind of a buildup of overthinking. It's just, it's just part of me, I guess. I really struggled this past like two months, like with graduating because I have these like awards coming in. I, you know, graduate at the top of my class, but I haven't really, in a way, I haven't felt proud of it because I feel like in a way my anxiety is what got me there because my anxiety has stopped me from going out with friends and like, I felt lonely, I guess, because there is, like I said, many nights where I kind of focused on school when I probably didn't need to. Like I could have gone out, I could have hung out with friends and stuff like that. I succeeded and I, I excelled academically, athletically, but I failed relationally throughout high school, but especially senior year. Junior year when I started to have, about the time when I was getting sick, about the time when I was like, 
I was trying to get into schools and um, get scholarships. That's when things flipped, I guess, to where I feel like I had to control all of that. Like I was the only one that was gonna be able to make those things happen for me. If I'm in the driver's seat for a while, for really all of the last two years of high school, anxiety was my GPS, it was my navigator. Then for a while I thought that I could be the navigator and I just had to tell anxiety no and like ignore it. But the reality is I can't just ignore it. I don't have like specific, a specific scripture I read or anything that made it click for me. Um, really, the big thing for me is music. A song called Compass. Um, it's by a really small worship band. And they just talk about how God is your compass. So I've kind of applied that to this analogy where it's like, if I'm in the driver's seat, God is my GPS. And I might not always know like the destination, like where he's taking me, but I just have to listen to the GPS and let him take me where he's gonna take me. I might have no idea why I'm where I am, but he brought me there for a reason. I just kind of have to let it happen. But at the same time, the anxiety is not gone. Like it's not out of the car. And so for me, I just view it as like the anxiety is in the back seat. It's like the annoying passenger in the back that is gonna be there and it's gonna creep up and ask, what are we doing here? You should be, we should be somewhere else. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? but you just have to trust your GPS and trust God to get you where he needs you.